back to The Daily Poem here on the Close Reads Podcast Network. I'm David Kern. Today's poem is by Jane Kenyon, an American poet who lived from 1947 to 1995. Kenyon is a, is a beloved poet now who was New Hampshire's poet laureate when she died in April of 1995 from leukemia. She was also um, Donald Hall's wife, Donald Hall being a, another beloved American poet. And the poem that I'm going to read today is called Let the Evening Come. This is how it goes. Let the light of late evening shine through chinks in the barn, moving up the bales as the sun moves down. Let the cricket take up chafing as a woman takes up her needles and her yarn. Let evening come. Let dew collect on the hoe abandoned in long grass. Let the stars appear and the moon disclose her silver horn. Let the fox go back to its sandy den. Let the wind die down. Let the shed go black inside. Let the evening come. Let evening come. To the bottle in the ditch, to the scoop in the oats, to air in the lung, let evening come. Let it come as it will, and don't be afraid. God does not leave us comfortless. So let evening come. Like many of Jen Kenyon's poems, this is one about nature, of course, and it follows in the long tradition of pastoral poems. What I love about this particular poem is, I mean, I love pastoral poems, but I don't want to focus on that today. I want to focus on some of the pacing and, and, the, and the, the musicality of this poem. Those are terms that are overused and often just kind of left a little abstract, probably even on this podcast too often, just simply because of the amount of time I have to comment on individual poems. But I love the way she builds to her turn in this poem. There's sort of a leisurely pace, you know, that sort of late afternoon pace, if you will. And every couple stanzas, we, we come to this, this line, let evening come, and the thought ends. So the first two stanzas, and then the, the second set of stanzas, and that same way. And that same pace is sort of just building and building and building. And she's not moving us terribly quickly along. In fact, she's slowing us down in some ways. She has end stops midline. There is enjambment in two lines, followed by an end stop, you know, a period in the middle of a line. So it's causing us to pause and stop and take in the images and think about them. So for example, stanza three, let do collect on the hoe abandoned in long grass takes us to the middle of the second line of the stanza, period. Let the stars appear and the moon disclose her silver horn. So she's giving us that pause. She's asking us to stop and think about the image that she's just given us. It's a very specific image too, right? Let do collect on the hoe abandoned in the long grass. There's so many different parts of the image that she's giving us to think about to, to add sort of a, a, a tactile um, element to it. And then at our fifth stanza, the pace just picks up all of a sudden. So the first four stanzas have had this sort of leisurely, unhurried, measured, whatever word you want to use, uh, slow pace. And then we get the second example, the second occurrence of let evening come followed by a period. And thus our first four stanzas are over. And then we get this, to the bottle in the ditch, to the scoop in the oats, to air in the lung, let evening come. So she switches her form up here. She buries the three images, the bottle in the ditch, the scoop in the oats, the air in the lung, into one sentence without periods, concluding in a single line with the words, let evening come. And that's where our turn is there. And the pace is all of a sudden quickened. So I imagine that to be sort of like a winter afternoon, for example, when very quickly the light begins to go. It seems like it's taking a while, taking a while, and then all of a sudden darkness or at least dusk comes on. And that's what I imagine of sort of a correlative for the, what she's doing formally there. And then she gets to reflect on that. Let it come as it will, and don't be afraid. In other words, let it come at the pace that it's going to come. You know, it's going to come quickly when it comes. Let it come as it will, and don't be afraid. Don't be afraid when the dark comes. God does not leave us comfortless. So let evening come. She doesn't necessarily tell us exactly what the comforts are. I mean, you can do some interpretive work and, and perhaps go back to the images that she's presented us throughout the whole poem. Um, or else you could just say, this is a, a poem that is offering us some modicum of hope and that the comforts are to each of us unique. Um, whatever it is, I think formally, I mean, this seems like a simple poem on the surface, but it's really lovely what she's doing formally there. 
Uh, but one more time, here is Jane Kenyon's Let Evening Come. Let the light of late afternoon shine through chinks in the barn, moving up the bales as the sun moves down. Let the cricket take up chafing as a woman takes up her needles and her yarn. Let evening come. Let dew collect on the hoe abandoned in long grass. Let the stars appear and the moon disclose her silver horn. Let the fox go back to its sandy den. Let the wind die down. Let the shed go black inside. Let evening come. To the bottle in the ditch, to the scoop in the oats, to air in the lung, let evening come. Let it come as it will, and don't be afraid. God does not leave us comfortless, so let evening come. This has been The Daily Poem. Thanks for listening. I'll be back tomorrow with another poem for you.